Today, boys and girls, we're gonna talk about holding companies and why you should set one up. This is the way that the big boys do it. This is how Apple, IBM, Amazon, they have a holding company and they have a subsidiaries of operating companies under the holding company. If this is your first time here, this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here is we get money through entrepreneurship. There's been a few questions. I don't know why people are confused because it's quite simple. You need to form the holding company before you form the operating company, which means that if you're not really sure about what you're gonna do, you can go ahead and form the holding company now because the way that it works is the holding company owns the subsidiaries or the operating companies. So you gotta make it first. And in terms of age, the clock starts ticking the day that you form your holding company. So part of this whole strategy is many small businesses run and operate on a small level. And this creates the lack of information because I've had some people who took the art of holding or the Hustlers LLC and they went to the bank and they were like, whoa, 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 what are you trying to do here, buddy? because they're not used to you having this kind of operation. If it was IBM, Amazon that was coming to the bank to do that, they like, okay. But they're not used to the common man having access to this information. Not used to it at all. So essentially, one of the things you should do is start your holding company as soon as possible. And the holding company has one purpose. That's to collect money from the operating companies. And that's the way that you play the tax strategy game. This is how you set up all of these tax strategies because you can set it up where your operating companies make, have a lot of deductions, have a lot of losses, and these losses pass up to the holding company. So there's, there's many, many ways that you can play this tax game. And anyone that's giving you financial advice that doesn't include tax strategies is not giving you the whole case because if you have a job and you were to start a side business that earned money and had deductions then those deductions and losses would pass up on your tax form where you could potentially get some of your withholding taxes back if you do it right i have a course how to start a youtube channel that will teach you how to do this and you don't have to make, you don't have to have a quote, successful YouTube channel. You just have to have it set up correctly. So one of the things that you should understand, and once again, I'm talking to my single men out here. The Hustlers LLC, the link is below. This will give you the tools that you need to set up your holding company and protect future wealth from evil ex-wives and bitter baby mamas. One of the things that many people seem to think that once you enter these rooms, you know, you got, you know, you just gotta pay her. Not necessarily if you take an ounce of prevention and if you set yourself up correctly. Uh, one of the things that people don't understand is timing and how law works. And I've got a video on the influence frame that goes into this because essentially, if you build something, and this, this is once again, why a man needs to be on his grind before he gets married and have kids. Because typically, if you wait until after you're married, you wait until after you have kids to start excelling, this becomes a product of the marriage. So once again, and just to be clear, she don't have to participate in the business. All she has to do is be legally married to you to lay claims to the, the business. That's it. And this is such a hard thing for people to understand because they be going off like, well, Kevin Garnett got to pay 100K and all. They were legally married. And this is why one of the biggest reasons that women want to get married because of the legal situation that allows them to have access to your current income 
And if you're married long enough, your wife can get half of your pension. Half. So these 10, 15, 20 year marriages, you know, I, I know of a gentleman who got divorced. His wife is getting half his pension. He's well to do. And, you know, it's a, it's a source between him and his, his current wife because she's like, why is she getting half of that? I mean, she gets half, like cut down the middle because they were legally married. And the laws are set up like this because for a long time, women could not have credit in their name. They couldn't do anything. Now all that's changed, but the laws have not changed because essentially, you know, as long as she stays unmarried, now if she gets married, this stops all this. If she gets married, so she can't get married and keep collecting that cash. And you know, she's seeing someone and the dude wants to get married. She's like, nah, no, 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 nope, nope. We ain't getting married. You ain't about to kill my money. And th this is one of the reasons that women always say about, you know, when they speak about um, marriage, they speak about masculine resources. Like, you know, if you were married to him, you would get benefits, you would have these options, you would have the ability to do X, Y, and Z in this certain situation. And she has claims upon your money, your income, and all of these other things. Now, a big part of this is understanding the law. Now you have family law and you have corporate law. Corporate law can be stronger than family law if you put corporate law into play before the family law comes into, you know, you, you got your business, it's up and running, you're making money before you get married. And then, you know, uh, one of the things I'm gonna do is help you guys to create language and stuff in your Hustlers LLC to protect yourself because one of the things that uh, many prenups do is they have a sunset clause. Like in the 15th year of the marriage or the 20th year of the marriage, it disappears. And typically, this is when a lot of women are like, okay, well, let's expire, let's get divorced now so I can lay claims to the money. It's a little insidious, but you know, my young dudes, I encourage you to go out and build your life, get your business together and protect yourself and start putting together all of these legal strategies because legally, the law is the law. And if you go to the Hustlers LLC, you can get married and not be financially raped because essentially what happens is this courts look at who has the biggest pockets. And if you got those big pockets, they take out a knife and they start carving off pieces. Cause it's like, well, you make so much money, you can afford to give that up. And that's not the point. The point is this woman did not do anything to earn this money. But once again, she legally married to you. That's the key. And this is why many men avoid marriage and avoid shacking, but once again, the same thing can happen if you have a kid by this woman, because you ever notice how many women have a 12, 13, 14, 15 year old kid, then they go out and they have another baby. So they got like kids with 10, 12, 13 year gaps. They reset that child support clock paleo because it has been a study that has been done that the average woman, once child support is over, they head, they nosedive into poverty. And one of the things that, you know, high child support do, because uh, essentially, um, I think in my case, they were figuring like getting three to four grand a month. You know what kind of child support payments, what kind of monster that this creates? Three to four grand a month, you don't have to pay taxes, it shows up every month. These people become incapacitated. They don't know how to take care of themselves. And this is what happens to a lot of women who go through a serious downgrade in standard of living once the child support payments stop. It is funny how that happens because these women have been subsidized by these large child support payments because uh, I remember having this conversation with my ex-wife and she was telling me what kind of child support her friends were getting. They, it was like a competition. Well, Sheila gets 1500 bucks a month. I would like to get 1500 bucks a month. You should do better. This is what this trick told me. 
And I was just sitting there like, but you are a lousy mother. This was my actual reply to that. So you want to get beat, you know, get paid for being a lousy mother. And she didn't like the sound of that. But, you know, one of the things that happens is prevention and setting this stuff up before you get married, before you have kids. Now, I know there are many kid, guys like, I'm already married, I already got kids, what about me? Is You're gonna have to have a totally different tactic. You're gonna have to go at it about a totally different way because many of you are married and your wife knows all of your secrets. She knows where the fortress of solitude is. She knows all the secrets. So unless you are very tight-lipped, like the dudes who have other families, you know, like these traveling salesmen, and no, and no one ever finds out they had another family until he died, then both his families show up at the funeral, and they like, what? That's dad, that's my dad, that's my dad. And these two wives are sitting here feuding over the estate. These dudes knew how to keep a secret. And this has happened quite frequently. And you gotta be like that, where you can love and respect your wife, but you gotta keep some stuff to yourself. And this is, you know, you know, people, many dudes get in trouble with, this is like, well, I want you to be completely transparent. I guarantee you, if you knew the things that your wife thought and she was completely transparent with you, it may make you reconsider your decision to marry her. So this, this is where I'm at with this complete transparency stuff. They only want you to be completely transparent so they can know what they're getting into without, with, while withholding pertinent information from you. So do yourself a favor. Go ahead, if you're a young man, start you a holding company. If you don't know what kind of business you want to start, you can figure that out later. But the clock starts with the age, the corporate age, because um, I've seen the power of an old LLC. Uh, we swore for these guys and Scott's father started the company. And when Scott got the company, this was a 30 something year old corporation. It had its own credit profile. It had 30 years of tax returns. It was like a person. And Scott inherited that. And Scott was able to take those corporate papers and tax returns and go get a loan, like a $2 million loan. So one of the things, you know, and th this is about setting this up because the age, because once you get past five years, that's a milestone because many businesses don't make it past five years. Once you get to 10 years, that's another milestone. You get a 30 year, whoo, a 30 year old LLC? That's a bad, bad boy to have because there are so many things that you can do with this. And one of the reasons that, you know, I'm, you know, I have a lot of pushback on this is you guys don't want to do the work because starting a business ain't easy. It's hard. There, there are many days where, you know, there, there's no cheering section. There's nobody going, yay, you know, and you just go in there and you do what you need to do. But the rewards are immeasurable. Scott was a young man and I remember he said, I gotta go home, we got five bathrooms. And at the time I was coming from the boarding house situation. Now that I live in a house with five bathrooms and it's funny, um, two, two of them don't even get used that much. Cause you know, we got this one down here, there's two on the main level and there's two on the uh, upstairs level. And it's a different life when you have abundance and access, when you can actually make decisions based upon, well, I wanna take a vacation. You don't have to save up to take a vacation. You just carve out the time and you go. This is the kind of lifestyle that starting these businesses and having these LLCs and mitigating your taxes will bring. Cause Scott had the X5, and once again, the business really wasn't making that much money when I joined. Not, you know, cause I think they had the year where they did 19 million. And they had moved and did all this other stuff and hired all these other people. But when I was there, Scott was able to live off that corporate, those corporate loans, live very well. And part of this is 
When you have the ability to take out, let's say a $2 million loan, and you they give you five or 10 years to pay it back, you can take a million and put it in the bank and use that money to pay them back and you got five years to figure out the rest. See, one of the things that people don't understand is like, you know, like say you're reestablishing credit and they give you all these toy limits. But when you start getting these $25,000 credit card limits, $40,000, $50,000 credit limits, you got five credit cards, $50,000 a piece. You can do some stuff. You can spin up $50,000 and still have $200,000 of unused credit, which will make your score stay high. So there are so many ways that you can do this game, but you got to participate in the American enterprise. You got to become a producer. You got to go out here and make something happen and build. All right, so for those of you who want the art of holding, the link's below. For those of you who want the Hustlers LLC, the link's below. And I will be adding some stuff later to that this week to give you guys more guidance. Because one of the things that you should understand is the legal structure is so important. Remember when people talking about the United States was based on the rule of law? And the rule of law is so important in terms of getting married, but it's also very important to setting up your corporate papers because you become a king. You can create your own corporation and that's your kingdom. And this is how these guys have these planes, they have these six figure car, they, they drive around in the corporate name because there, there's so many ways that you can do this, but you gotta play the game. You gotta get your holding company, you gotta get your operating company, you gotta get your business up and running. You gotta go out here and get this money man, get this money man. So with that, I'll see you guys later. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to join the Hustlers Kung Fu Facebook group where we talk about business and other things. So with that, I'll see you guys later.